Hello YouTube, I fix it all here, Team I Fix It All. Today we are analyzing um, what you gain from doing a tune-up. I hope I keep my meter right where it belongs so you can see it. Um, I recently pulled out my fuel filter to get apart on a previous video. Now I'm over here picking on uh, spark plug wires. I did a spark plug video, but I'm going to add to that spark plug information. What um, I guess what we're we're going to do right now is when you do a tune up, um, are you interested in what you are actually gaining? Like, can you see by way of measurements what you gained by doing the tune up? So that's what I'm after today. I had a miss develop in my uh, 5.0 liter 302 pushrod motor, 87 20th anniversary Mercury Cougar. And it was uh, getting to a point that I thought, yeah, something's going on goofy here. I need to check this out. So what I'm doing is a resistance check on spark plug wires. And what I did was I found uh, these are two spark plug wires. One is new and one is old. Here's another a pair of spark plug wires. One is brand new and one is old. Can you guys see that? Uh, barely. Let me, I don't know if I should tilt that or not. Eh, maybe okay. Let me see if the illuminations are good. Yep. Here's another pair of spark plug wires. One is new and one is old. And what we're trying to do is establish what is the resistance of the new spark plug wires compared to the current resistance condition of the old spark plug wires. So what we have to do is develop a baseline. Well, I developed my baseline by, uh, uh, let's first address these three pairs of wires. I have a uh, short matched set. I've got a short wire from the new box of plug wires that matched to a short wire that was running on my engine. I have that documented on the plug wire in its length. I have another pair of plug wires. One is new out of the box that I will read and measure the resistance of and compare it to the old. Okay? And then I have the also important coil wire. They match up in length. I documented the uh, length in inches on all three pairs, which I'll be doing a resistance comparison. So it's an eight-cylinder engine. You subtract out the coil wire compared to my list I have here, okay? Uh, reason being is because we're talking about, um, we're going to measure the coil wire, but I want to uh, keep my um, talk organized here and talk about all eight cylinders. Why is that flux still open? Goodness. All right. Yeah. So I have two cylinders worth of spark plug wires laid out, and I have the other eight new the other the remaining six new ones right here in my hand that I've measured the length on what I did was I measured the length of just uh, I met I documented the length of these six plug wires I documented it on the with a sharpie on each one. Then I took the resistance reading 
of all six individual plug wires, brand new, wrote it down on my dry erase board, and I come up with these numbers to help develop my baseline of what I expect my resistances to be for those guys over there. And to include the remaining old plug wires. Um, I have uh, six spark plug wires here that represented from the stack I just showed you in my hand. And I measured all of their length. Why am I pointing with that? This one was 31 inches, and it yielded a resistance reading of 463 ohms per inch. And the reason why I bring this up is because if you want to analyze your spark plug wires to find out, are you gaining something by spending that $50, $60, $70, $80 for a new set of plug wires? I'm bumping the camera, sorry. Um you won't really know until you buy the new ones and do this test yourself. But what you will do is you will remember the expectations you have out of a spark plug wire as far as resi resistance check goes. And this, uh, these spark plug wires are eight millimeter standard spark plug wires i believe that's correct in saying it's standard um there could be six millimeter so this applies to eight millimeter plug wires my old ones are eight millimeter and my new ones are eight millimeter so that was important to state for those who are going to get a little bit more technical on this on one of uh on one of the uh, bundle of new spark plug wires that I showed you bundled up in my hand just now, one of them measured 31 inches and it read a huge resistance value. But I divided that resistance value by 31 and I come up with 463 ohms per inch. There's a spark, a new spark plug wire, again, that measured 25 inches in length. And when I measured its resistance, uh, you know, it could have been like 12, 13,000 ohms. I don't know. Um, actually, I could go 25 times 52. Let me do that. Okay, so I don't want to pull the wires down again and find the exact one. But let's just say for the one that was 31 inches... I would go 31 times 452, and that total resistance value for the first spark plug wire, I just hit pi, damn it. Ah, can't do a video to save my life. 31 times 452, because remember, it's 31 inches long, uh, yeah, 31 times 463. 31 times 463. That particular spark plug wire was reading 14,353 ohms. Or the multimeter was giving me 14.35k ohms. It's not giving me my last digit. So you have to, you have to kind of know... When it shows you the decimal point, like uh, on the multimeter behind the dry erase board here, it was reading 14.35k ohms. So that told me um, just add another digit on the end. and So 31 times 463 told me that spark plug wire is about 14,353 ohms. What I was talking about on getting a baseline was reading the remaining six spark plug wires for my cylinders gave me the ability to now willy-nilly measure any length spark plug wire knowing 
that if I add these together and divide by six, I'll come up with the average resistivity ex expectation. And it just so happened my average comes out to be about 463 ohms per inch. Because that's the way it worked out. Add all six of these together and it's close enough to 463. With that being said, let's analyze our our uh, old wires and our new. I got this stupid string tangled around my spark plug, or uh, my uh, meter. Here's a set of spark plug wires that I want to um, call out as. Remember, there's a new wire and then there's an old wire in there, and I want to call this my uh, longer wire on my engine. So one is brand new and one was the old existing and it measures right now the new uh, the new and the old are identical and my length is 33.25 inches. We're going to do the math on this and see um, what the hell is going on. Could my plug wires have been the fault? Go to ohms. One day we'll go over the multimeter. There's plenty of YouTube on this, but I feel like I want to do it myself. It's omega ohms. Every multimeter out there uses the same symbology. You just got to get technically um, aware of what the symbols mean. So this is ohms. And we're going to read, and that's, uh, that's what it is when people say they want to measure the resistance of something. It's in ohms. Got my meter in vision. Keep this over here for a minute. First, I'm going to measure the new spark plug wire. And when you look down inside the boot, <clears throat> you will... Uh, are you going to see that or not? Um, I could help you see that if I had the tool. I'm going to be flashing a light in such a way as to aid you in that. Inside the boot, there is a metal clip. There's rubber and a metal clip. I have no idea if this is even worth its salt or not. Give that a couple of, there's a metal clip in there. That's not bad right there. What I'm doing is wedging my, my meter lead between the exterior of the clip and the rubber so that, it, that it's in a significant bind. And I'm being rough when I insert the meter lead to scrape away any kind of possible uh, oxidation layer that might be uh, 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 that have happened by these things sitting in the um, in the box for however long. So I'm I'm going like this. I'm I'm peeking down inside to find out where the best friction spot is, and I'm putting my meter lead in there and I'm jabbing it, and I'm scraping too. Let's see what this this spark plug wire that reads that is a uh, 33 and a quarter inches long. You guys in the world of metric have to convert that because I think it goes like this: uh, 2.5 centimeter, two and a half centimeters to an inch. I'm probably screwing that all up. Okay, so.
to make sure I have a good connection. And what I've noticed is you kind of let, got to let some of these spark plug wires settle for a minute. What we read right there is... 13,840. We can't see the last digit. <clears throat> now it's down to 30. But what we do know is the screen is telling us there's a K and then Omega symbol. So 13.820 because Kilo, listen to me, doing the metric system. I understand Kilo. <laughs> that's probably because all of your electrical world stuff, most all of it is a hybridized version of metric and standard. Uh, so let's call this 13,800 ohms. Let's see if that new spark plug wire matches up to my, close enough to my baseline average of 463 ohms per inch. Right now, this spark plug wire is, uh, oh, it was over here, 33 and a quarter. So, 33 and a quarter inches long is what this wire is. So, what we do is simply take the resistance reading and divide by 33.25. I'm going to use 13,810, 13,810 divided by uh, 33.25, divided by 33.25, what the hell happened? 13,800, let's just go with that, divided by 33.25. That's saying about 415 ohms per inch. It's a lot lower than my baseline. Don't know why, but I know that I'm getting in the 400 to 450 ohm realm. Let's make sure my meter leads aren't misconnected somehow. Double check my work. We could all agree that it's leveling out at 13,800-ish ohms. Again, um, that's a little lower than my baseline of 463 ohms. That's the new wire. Let's measure its mate. It's exact length old wire and what do I do with this okay Put the meter leads in feels like it's in there pretty good now this is like the test to see if you did your money if your money's well spent Let's find out. Why did it jump like that? Connections, connections. We'll go to a place where it looks like my meter lead will bind up better. Well, it was trying to settle down. I shouldn't have jumped the gun. Let me just stop being so impatient. There we go. I'm satisfied with that. It's it's a it's a fairly yeah. 
Well, we're a far cry lower. 8,900 ohms. For a wire that is uh, 33 and a quarter, correct? Thank you. So, 8,900 divided by 33.25. That's 267 ohms per inch. A pretty uh, far distance from our desired average of four and a quarter to 450. Um, I know I was saying 463 earlier, but looking for the low 400 ohms per inch. And we've got 267 ohms per inch. That's a big ass number. Maybe you guys need to see the decimal point. There you go. 267.669. We're it's splitting hairs if we start talking about all these lower digits. I mean honestly, I can say it's 250 ohms. It's half. Why is it half? Let's move on. Because um, sometimes I self-confuse when I think of things and I try to associate it with something I already know in order to learn. Um, I think of, uh, you know, what comes to mind as a, uh, a conductor you know, a conductor. You don't want your conductor to have high resistance because it won't conduct. Well, in this situation, we're having a different discussion. We are, we are having a discussion of the premise behind the design of the spark plug wires mandates it must need that amount of resistivity per inch. And therefore, anything that deviates from that baseline must be a signal of degradation, a signal of decay, a signal of breakdown, a signal of getting worn the hell out. All right. So, um, I that's why I say sometimes I self-confuse because I think about things and I think, well, yeah, uh, spark plug wires used to be solid copper wires but they changed that for a reason um your spark your coil and your uh, engine is producing thousands of volts but low current and by design there's a certain degree of of dependency that your coil has to be able to see about 450 ohms per inch. So we got that spark plug wire taken off the table. <clears throat> Let's look at this, what I what I noted as my, um, my shorter spark plug wires. There's a new and there's an old. So these are 21 and a half inches long. Twenty-one and a half inches. You can do the calculations if you want and get ahead of me of what the expectations are because it's twenty-one and a half inches. Twenty-one point five times my expected four hundred fifty ohms per inch times four fifty. I expect to see about. Nine to ten thousand, uh, ninety-five hundred to ten five, ten thousand five hundred, somewhere in there. Uh, did I say that right? The length, twenty-one point five. Yeah, let me do that one more time. Twenty-one point five inches times my desired, or what my baseline of let's say four fifty times four fifty equals 9,675 ohms. 
Let's see if the multimeter agrees with my predetermined calculations. Uh, I'm on a, I'm expecting somewhere around 10, 10,000 ohms on this new wire. Ten thousand six thirty six sixty. Ten point five six k ohms, or ten thousand five hundred and fifty ish. Okay, so um, my instinct to go toward the high end was correct. So that's the new wire. Let's take a look at the old wire. Why are we doing this? We're trying to determine, did we spend our money appropriately? And then later on, you use this information to troubleshoot by. Okay, so I think I got in that one okay. I'm expecting 10,500 ohms because it's an older wire, so let's see what we come up with. <laughs> jingle, jangle. Something warbled loose. I saw the reading. It was exceptionally low. We're doing this together, though. 6,630 ohms. Hmm. And what was the length again? 21 and a half. 6,630 divided by 21.5 is 308 ohms per inch. 308 divided by my expectation of 450 per inch. Is 68% minus 1. That's a 31.4% difference. In other words, the degradation in this particular spark plug wire is a third. A third of its capacity to perform. Now, a piece that's interesting to note, the ambient temperature in the room right now is 60. Uh, my fire has gone down in the stove. <clears throat> have to wonder what happens if these wires get warm because they're close to heat. So right now, just at room temperature, they're a third low. You know, do you, do you want to realize your bank account is a third lower than what you thought it was? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about right there. That nailed it. Here's my coil wires, a new and an old. The spark plug coil on my car happens to be mounted on the fender well and a <clears throat> spark plug wire traverses from the coil to the center of the distributor. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Ford 302 engine and you'll see a wire that travels from this roundy thing on the center of the engine that has one of these on it and that wire goes to the coil. This wire happens to be 29.5 inches long. What are, what are our expectations using our baseline? 29.5 times 450 ohms per inch. My expectations are that I should have 13,275 ohms. Again, are we spending our money wisely? Hmm. 
9,000 ohms. So if that is 29.5, 29.5 inches times, what did I do there? That's silly. 9,050 ohms. 9,050 divided by 29.5. 29.5 gives me an ohmic value of 306 ohms per inch divided by 450 that's 68% of its original capacity at room temperature we we will assume as a group here that when things heat up the, there are very few things that perform better when they get warm. The short, there's a short list of things that do that. The warmer they get, the better they operate and the more efficient they become. A jet engine would be one. Um, depending on how you view it, a wood stove, you know. So it's highly likely through simpleton conversation that if the wires get warm they are likely to to show characteristics of even further degradation that's the old wire let's see what the new wire tells us in the same length for my coil I better leave that there just because it's got the number on it for length. Hook up my meter leads. I think it was 29.5. Yep. This same length wire reads 14,200 and Darr. let's just call it 14,200. Okay. It's like dropping. I think that's because my battery might be getting a little low. I'm going to stick with 14,000. It's, it's flipping back up to 7 to 6. Yeah. 14,150. Screw it, I'm calling it. 14,150 divided by uh, 29.5 divided by 29.5. What the hell? 14,150 divided by 29.5 equals 479 ohms per inch. All right. I don't like multimeters that tell you they've been unattended when you're interacting with them. I have a fluke that if I'm on resistance and I don't use it, it buzzes or it auto shuts off. But as soon as I use it to take a reading, it resets the sleep timer. But since uh, it's nothing more than just a minor inconvenience, I can understand I like this meter a lot. It's a really, really weird off-brand name, but it has features on it that you generally have to pay big bucks for to get on a multimeter. Um, this one will do uh, Celsius temperature, Fahrenheit temperature, capacitance, and frequency, along with your standard features you generally get now taking temperature requires a separate probe for that and i have that because it comes with the meter but this is a meter man um i may actually 
invest in getting one or two more of these. I'm really happy with it. Getting off topic. All right, here goes uh, something else. So what we what we learned is yes, the money was spent correctly. We ended up uh, discovering that our old spark spark plug wires are after warm. They're probably fifty percent degraded. I would not mind if this was a shop and I worked on cars for a living, living which I don't. Um, I can, uh, but I don't. I would not be bashful at all in telling the customer that said, well, with a cold spark plug wire, you're running at 30 to 40% degraded. And it's hard to tell how bad they get when the engine warms up. So that's a reasonable conversation at the layman level when someone asks, well, what did you find? Well, here's what I found. Um, I found that your spark plug wires were decaying and breaking down. Here is something real interesting. We did a spark plug video the other day about my old spark plugs. And we were talking about, you don't really have to know much about things if you just know how to compare things, okay? So, I set these, these are my old spark plugs. And they all incorrect. These are my new. Let's do the new first, because I found something interesting. These are my new spark plug spark plugs, and again, uh, when you check spark plugs, you want to read from the um, the tip of the center conductor that's creating the spark to jump this gap. That tang is physically a part of the threaded portion that screws into your engine block, so your so the energy coming in from your coil goes in here, travels through the spark plug, out to the electrode, and jumps the gap and gets a ground because your spark plug is screwed into the engine. And then your engine is grounded to the frame of the car. Your battery's negative cable is bonded yeah, I need to use the right terminology. I don't need techie people busting my balls because this is a big deal in AC electrical bonding versus grounding. It's totally two different things. But your battery's negative post is also attached to the frame. So your coil fires a pulse of energy through the spark plug wire and through the spark plug. Therefore, this... This uh, this is measurable. This is measurable with a multimeter. So, um, these are my new plugs. And I decided that I'm going to see if they all read the same. I'm measuring from just the electrode to the other end. And I'm not letting this meter lead touch this part because I want to I want to show you something about something that's a nuance that's me I'm reading 350 meg ohms or million ohms if you're taking resistance reading and you include your body into your readings you could affect the outcome of the reading you're getting. And you don't want your body's resistance to become involved in your detailed measurements. So what I'm attempting to do is I'm not carrying with one hand, but I am carrying with the other. I'm not touching that with my skin. So that spark plug comes to be 5.3 K ohms. Well, that means it's 5,340. I'm just not seeing the third digit. 
if that's confused a lot of people, um, with how to read a multimeter in general, not what we're doing here today. So I've got 5.3 K ohms. It's jumping around there. Why? 5.3 K. Okay. Gives me a general idea of what's going on. That's a brand new plug. 5.4K. I'm just dropping all the tens and uh, thousands. I'm just saying 5.5K, 5.4. 5.2K. Five point four K. I'm like, okay, um, my spark plugs need to be about five thousand ohms. Five point five K. Anything within reason close to five thousand ohms, as long as it's bigger than five thousand, is a in my situation is going to be a decent plug. Five point five. The reason I had these in two bundles is because brand new out of the box, we get this. 4.5K. Now, honestly, if we just drop the K business and say 4.5 ohms versus 5.5 ohms, that's, uh, that's a humongous difference. It's like, what, 20% difference? A little over 20%? I mean, what's... Uh, 5.5, 4.5 divided by 4.5 divided by 5.5 is a minus 1. That's an 18% difference. New, out of the box. In other words, not only is it reading different, but it's reading lower. It's reading lower. Now remember the earlier conversation. I said that we are at room temperature. Could it be even worse after it warms up? This other one is reading 4.9. If, if I want to call my baseline 5.25, I go 4.9 divided by... 5.25 minus 1. That's a 6% delta right off the bat. To the bad, because I know when, the, when things get warm, generally, or hot, and I don't know, do you think a spark plug gets hot? Uh, when things get overcooked, <laughs> overclocked, you have something called heat. Heat is measured in watts, or BTU, British Thermal Units. And um, it takes 3.41 BTU of cooling to cool one actual watt of heat produced. Interesting formula, you should know. So, these two spark plugs are, are, are telling me that maybe I should go back to the store and get a couple of replacement ones and read them right there at Napa. These are Auto Light 2545s. My old spark plugs are Auto Light 2545s. Autolite 2545s. Same spark plug, part number. I've got these broken up into three groups because now you get to see the uh, differences I found. The vast majority of the old spark plugs were reading 44 
4.1, maybe. Four point four ish. Four point two. Five point oh, we like that. Five point five, we like that. <clears throat> Three point seven. So three point seven at a delta of five twenty five. So three point seven divided by five point two five minus one is almost thirty percent difference. All right, so you have to wonder, I didn't document it, but where was this? 3.7 ohm value spark plug in my engine. What position was it in? And was it affiliated to a spark plug wire that had an already degraded resistance? And then my claim that I have this mist that's occurring. Um, so therefore, I think that... Um, let me see if there's one more point I was wanting to make. Um, oh, yeah. The two new spark plugs that I found that read under 5,000 ohms are almost like the old spark plug readings. When the vast majority of my spark plugs um, in the new variety over there was like 5,250 ohms and I had a couple of anomalies that out of the box there's that huge difference that justifies me to take these back and get replacements for them. That's something that you can think like when you do tune-ups. What's, uh, what's my new stuff read and is it all within... Um, within a uh, are they all kind of close and you got to be reasonable you know there comes a point when there's a big difference of a thousand ohms versus there isn't the bigger your baseline number means you got more give and take it's within tolerance it's kind of like resistors and um, you know uh, what their tolerance is are they a 20% a 10% a 5% or 1% resistor so, I think we may have found our miss right here. This spark plug that was reading way under 4,000 ohms. And it's likely it could have been connected to a spark plug wire that was definitely reading in a compromised value in total resistivity. So, that's the end of this video, guys. I hope you had a great view, and uh, have a great rest of your afternoon. See ya. Hello, YouTube. I fix it all here. Team I fix it all. Uh, I needed to add on to the previous video, but I don't feel like splicing two together. Um, I'll go ahead and just... Well, I may splice it. I don't know. I might make a second one. Who knows? But I may have just found my miss. This is the new distributor cap. And what I do know is that by design, the rotor button is physically attached to the engine. And it has a metal tang here that travels up through here. But this metal tang <clears throat> rides on something called... <clears throat> the distributor cap rotor button 
section of the distributor cap. This is the rotor button, but this is the button that is the button that's spring loaded. And you can turn it, but I don't I don't I don't want to endorse uh, fiddling with the spinny of it very much. Just in and out. And since that's conductive, the coil comes in and plugs into right here, sends en energy through this post and up to this rotor button, touches that, which rides right here all of its life, and spins around and arcs like lightning to each one of these posts here and sends electricity through the spark plug wire out to your spark plug. That's how that works. But the point of the additional part to this video is shut up. I'm going to test this section of the button for resistance. And I believe you can see the multimeter well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a tight grip on this meter lead on the center post. You know, scrape it a little, just make as best contact as I can. And I'm going to push the button in with my meter lead. And wiggle test and watch my multimeter. Pushing it in. Whoa. Dang it. <clears throat> Sorry. I'll try to get a good contact and... Oh, God, mesh. Okay. I'm wet. Harder than it looks, guys. I don't know how whispering helps either. Does anybody else have that same problem when you're trying to do meticulous work and you suddenly start whispering? It's stupid. Pushing in all the way. I ah, lost contact with everything. I'm probably going to just zoom in and let you see this. Hang on. Let's see if I can do some zoomage. I was having better success before. There we go. Grab it. And I'm going to push in and wiggle. Again, based on the earlier premise, we're looking for what can we expect. I expect on the old distributor cap to see about 6 ohms. That is not kilo in this case, but around 6 or 7 ohms. Again, I'm wiggling around that little button. Yeah, let's just call it six ohms. Here's the old cap. Get connected. See the wear and tear on the button that's been riding the rotor button. Of course, the jabs in it is my meter leads. Here's that new rotor button. And the old. You can see where it's been riding. The 
let's cut that divot in it, which ain't bad. It's, it's, it's normal, you know, at least it tells you that you're making contact and you're supposed to have that kind of wear because if you spun around that many times rubbing against something, you'd have a wear spot too. All right. So the old dizzy cap. Dizzy short for distributor. Plus it's fun because dizzy going around in circles. All right. Let's try this out. Make sure you're in frame. And I'm going to push in and wiggle. I'm getting anywhere from open conditions to that's 4,000, that's 2,000, 12,000. Half a mag, 250, 1,000, 8, Five, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. I think what's going on is my distributor cap was intermittent. Um, let me fix the image. Most likely, the biggest contributor to the issue was the distributor cap is intermittent based on that measurement. Um, I'm probably going to uh, document on the inside of the distributor cap um, 10 ohms. I'm just going to say 10 ohms. I don't want the red sharpie. I wonder if this is a high probability failure rate item. Because <clears throat> a lot of times you look at distributor caps and you say, well, it's not cracked. It looks good. Um... But as long as I've been dinking around with cars, where did my writing utensil go? Uh, my, sh my black Sharpie. I didn't know to take this reading here and understand what I'm supposed to get until today. So I learned something new. I know, now I know this needs to be about, I'm willing to say, Oh, there it is. Um, well, I'll just put down my new value. The new value. I'm going to put uh, 7 ohms. 7 ohms. I wrote that in there for me later on. I can't get a steady reading, so I think this cap is jacked. It makes me want to go through my spare parts and check those as well and just trash them. But what I would really like to do is find out why. Because what I did notice is that I can take this button by hand and spin it this away and this away with less friction <clears throat> than I can this one. This one I noticed I can spin it clockwise similar in feel to that one but if I go counter I almost feel like I'm listen I'm, it's like I'm an opposing a spring Somehow, there's a spring in there. There's a spring in here that is worn out in such a way that it is reducing connection to this center post. And I want to dig in there and see if I can fix that. To be continued. See ya.